Welcome to the introductory lecture for Chem 117, Organic Chemistry Laboratory 1, here at Georgetown University in the fall of 2016. I'm Professor Davis, the instructor for the course, and over the next 30 minutes or so, I'd like to take you through a brief overview of the course objectives and the course policies so that we can all arrive at our first recitation on Wednesday, August 31st, ready to begin learning about the science and the practice of synthetic organic chemistry. The effective and safe practice of organic chemistry in a laboratory requires that we collect a rather long list of skills, and so we'll be dedicating most of our semester to doing just that. Here are some of the major learning objectives for the course. First, I'd like you to be able to understand and follow common safety practices when you work in the organic chemistry lab, including, but definitely not limited to, how you dress, how you conduct yourself, and, of course, how you handle the chemicals and reagents that you'll be exposed to. I'd like you to learn how to select, design, and execute an appropriate purification strategy for lots of different potential mixtures of chemicals that you may encounter during a synthesis. We're also going to focus on producing proper in-lab documentation of our experiments. If our experiments go well, we're going to want to share that information with the world. But if we're going to do that, we've got to be absolutely ready to back it up using proper documentation of our activities. We're going to focus also on how to select and execute appropriate spectroscopic techniques used to identify and characterize the organic compounds that we're trying to create. We'll spend some time learning how to draw and use professional quality reaction schemes and mechanisms using the same electronic applications that professionals do. Then we'll explore the chemical literature using a variety of modern search and retrieval tools that are available to us through the university. We'll learn to locate, read, and also cite professional quality chemical literature so that when we build a report, we have a good foundation of information that we are leaning on. And our final goal for the course will be to execute and report on a simple synthetic organic chemistry experiment from soup to nuts not only conducting that experiment, but properly documenting it and also reporting on it just as a professional synthetic chemist would. As I mentioned previously, I'm Professor Ron Davis, the instructor for the course. You can find me in my office at 103 in Basic Science on the northwest corner of campus. My office extension is 73566 and my university email is rbd34 at georgetown.edu. I'll be available in my office every Monday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in case you have any questions regarding fundamental content on which you'll be quizzed at your Monday afternoon recitations. So anytime you come by my office on Monday afternoon, just keep an eye out for this guy, I mean this guy, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have regarding our fundamental concepts. If those times don't work for you, I'll do my best to make an appointment with you or speak with you if you come by unannounced, keeping in mind, of course, that I can only guarantee my attention when we've made an appointment. But I'm not the only human resource for the course. You'll also have a teaching assistant assigned to your section of the course. So each section will have its own TA. They're my minions. Now, you're likely to find that among my minions, their grading styles and expectations will vary slightly. Therefore, when in doubt, always follow your assigned TA's instructions when it comes to assignments that you'll be submitting for a grade. I'd also ask, because of how large the course is, that outside of their regular office hours, that you contact only your assigned section TA for questions regarding laboratory issues. This will keep any one particular TA from becoming overburdened. And just in case you're worried that your TA happens to be this guy right here, keep in mind also that at the end of the semester, I will personally evaluate grade distributions over the entire course and analyze those distributions so that I can make any necessary adjustments to grades at the end of the semester. During the semester, however, I will not be making running adjustments. I'll be waiting until I have all the necessary data to make those judgments. 
So we've established already that she'll need to be able to find basic science in the northwest corner of campus. But that's not the only building that she'll need to go to in order to complete the requirements for Chem 117. On Mondays at 4 p.m., each section will meet in a different location around campus for a one-hour recitation with their teaching assistant. So you'll need to know where at least one of these other buildings is located as well. Be sure to check your schedule with the registrar and find the appropriate room for your recitation and be there on time Mondays at 4 p.m. No matter which building you need to go to for recitation, for laboratories or visits to my office, you'll always go to the Basic Science Building on the Med Center campus just across from Med Dent. Here's an example of the building's entrance with, of course, the large words Basic Science inscribed above. If you enter through those doors, you'll find a lounge with my office immediately to the right and if you instead turn left and walk down the hallway, you'll find the teaching labs as well as the stock room where you can purchase items such as lab coats, safety glasses, locks for your lab drawers, etc. We'll cover all that in a moment. You'll want to pay a visit to the university bookstore also before we begin our work in lab. You'll want to go there so that you can purchase a copy of the text for the course, which looks like this. In addition to having the text which contains your background readings, you'll also want a lab notebook for use in the lab. Your lab notebook should be bound, having either sewn or glued pages. So anything as simple as a black and white composition book, up to the more feature-packed notebooks that are available at the GU Bookstore, are acceptable. You can paginate by hand and duplicate using photocopiers if your notebook does not contain carbon pages. It's important that you have one of these types of resources for documentation, as it's generally unaccepted to use things like coil-bound books, notes that are meant to be transcribed later from a non-permanent source, any kind of electronic documentation, and even the awesome power of the human memory are not considered acceptable. They must be entries written into a bound notebook. You'll also need to secure a few additional items in order to participate in lab, including approved eye protection. And we'll talk about what that means when we have our check-in and safety discussion. But for now, suffice to say that not all types of eyewear are considered adequate eye protection for the lab. You will also need a light duty padlock with two keys, being sure that the lock is not too heavy duty because the large D-ring on contractor grade locks will not fit into our receivers. Also. The stockroom will retain one of those two keys for emergencies or in case you forget. Therefore, combination locks are also not allowed. If you're going to purchase either of these items from the stockroom itself, be sure that you bring some funds on your go card as the stockroom does not accept any other form of payment. We'll also be relying heavily on the Blackboard course management website. For this course, we'll be using this resource to distribute the online safety quiz for you to make online submissions of certain documents. It will also serve as a depository for safety data sheets for some of the materials that we'll be working with in lab. We'll also have access to some visual aids, your grades in the course, and links to the important fundamentals lectures that you need to watch before your recitations. So if you're not familiar with use of the Blackboard course management website, be sure that you visit the student FAQ for the website at campus.georgetown.edu uh, so that you know how to access all of this vital information. This brings us to the schedule for the semester. Now notice that on the week of August 29th, you'll be attending your recitation on a Wednesday as though it were a Monday. This will be your opportunity to meet with your TA, have any of your questions answered regarding course policies, and get ready for your lab check-in and safety discussion the following week. Remember that September 5th is Labor Day, so there will be no Monday recitation on that day, but you will report to the labs beginning this week so that you can check in and start getting ready for your first experiment. You can review the remainder of this schedule on your own. It will be available on the course syllabus which is going to be posted to the Blackboard website. 
Keep in mind that makeup laboratories will only be arranged at my discretion and only when required by university policy. Your teaching assistant does not have the authority to schedule makeup labs for you. So if you feel the need for one, be sure that you contact me directly using the contact information that was provided previously. Okay, time to get down to brass tacks. How are you going to be evaluated in this course? Every assignment in this course, be it a quiz, a report, a worksheet, or an exam, will be graded on a scale of 100 points. That 100 point score will then be entered into a weighted average to determine your final course score. Those weights are as follows. Your safety quiz and fundamentals quizzes are each worth 1% of your final grade. You'll also have eight lab exercises, each of which will count towards 6.25% of your final grade meaning that those eight lab exercises in total count for 50% of your final grade. Our final project of the semester will be a full-scale experiment, including the synthesis and characterization and purification of a compound. And the report for this all-encompassing project that involves the previous eight skills that we've learned will be worth 15% of your final score. There will also be a lab exam administered during finals week. That lab exam will count for 25% of your final grade. So once your final weighted score has been calculated, it will be applied to a rubric to determine what your letter grade for the course is. A tentative standard rubric of 90.0, 80.0, 70.0, and 60.0 will apply to the cutoffs among A, B, C, and D letter grades. There will be plus minus cutoffs, but those will be determined at the end of the term based upon the course score histogram, but they will not exceed plus or minus 3.0 percentage points. In other words, if you absolutely, positively must walk out of the final exam knowing that you have an A, you'll need at least a 93.0% for that to be a certainty. Keep in mind that the Blackboard website gradebook calculations are going to be considered official. Those are the numbers I will use to determine your final grade. So be sure that you keep track and make sure that your TA has made all of the entries for your scores correctly. Rounding of final scores are done at my discretion at the end of the term. And please note that grades in the course are earned. They're not negotiated. I will only entertain legitimate calculation and transcription errors with regard to grades. So what do you do if you feel that you do need a grade correction? Well, I always encourage good faith discussion of lab exercises, but any requests to alter assignment scores need to be brought either to your TA or to my attention within one week of its return to you. This is your window of time to review your work, determine if grading errors have been made, and appeal to have them corrected. After that one week period has passed, I will not entertain requests for any corrections to grades whatsoever. So let's talk a little bit about working in the lab. I'd like to make something very clear to you right now. Failure is a part of lab work. I expect that at some point during the semester, for every last student in the course, something isn't going to work as expected. You're going to mix milk and cornflakes and get a fire. Now what do you do when that happens? Well in the science lab you don't panic. In the science lab you try to offer an insightful discussion of a failed experiment. Why did our experiment fail? And what might we be able to do differently to make it work correctly the next time? These are valid questions, and their answers carry real value in future scientific study. In short, we're scientists. We admit to our mistakes and try to learn from our failed experiments. In short, the mantra for the course is this. A good discussion of poor data trumps a poor discussion of good data. Now let's talk about how to get a good discussion of good data. Before each laboratory meeting, be sure that you read all background material 
that's been assigned in the syllabus, including that from the manual. View the fundamentals lecture, which we'll post every Friday, and be sure that you view it before the 4 p.m. Monday recitation, as you'll be quizzed on some of that content. And then, of course, attend that recitation, so that you can not only take the fundamentals quiz, but have an insightful discussion with your TA about the coming week's procedure. Of course, before you try to conduct any procedure, be sure you read and fully understand it. And prepare your notebook with compound properties and procedural notes before you go into the lab to ensure that you have all the reference information you need. And finally, if there are any unfamiliar materials being used, review their SDSs for new compounds that you'll be working with. When working in the laboratory, be punctual. Pay close attention to our safety lecture and arrive properly dressed for your own safety. Come prepared with your lab notebook, your pen, and any necessary procedures and PPE. Arrive prepared to have one last short discussion with your TA about the details of the experiment. And then once you begin, work efficiently and neatly. Visualize how you're going to complete the experiment in the time that you're given. Of course, it goes without saying that you should always follow your TA's instructions, even when they run counter to the procedure, and never deviate from the procedure without that approval or instruction from your TA. And finally, in general, be respectful of the property, space, and time of the other 15 students who are working alongside you. We're all in this together, and the more we cooperate and respect one another, the more we'll get done, and the more we're going to learn. Once your laboratory session is complete and you walk out with your data, you'll prepare a worksheet or discussion following the course guidelines and any specific instructions from your procedure for the week. Once that's complete, you'll submit that assignment. Be sure that it's submitted on time as there's a 10 point per day or portion of a day late penalty. Remember that all of our assignments are scored on a 100 point scale, which means that a 10 point deduction is 10% of your final score. So be sure that you submit at the beginning of the class meeting indicated on the course syllabus. And remember that only I have the authority to grant extensions or late penalty forgiveness. Your TA does not have this authority. Finally, remember also that you owe a electronic version of your report as well. And that needs to be uploaded through Blackboard before your assignment is considered submitted. So be sure that you hand in not only the hard copy, but that you've uploaded the electronic version as well on time so that your entire assignment can be considered submitted in a timely fashion. Your first eight lab exercises will involve the use of worksheets and your final lab exercise will involve a lab report. Any written materials necessary to conduct and submit these laboratory experiments will be posted to Blackboard on the Friday prior to that particular exercise. Each of them will have a cover sheet that will look something like this, with a grading rubric attached and a blank for your name, TA, and date of submission. Be sure that this cover sheet is on top of the assignment that you submit. The cover sheet must accompany all paper submissions. This is where the TA's evaluation will be recorded and your final grade will be written. There is a cumulative lab exam that is given during finals week. But if you're inclined to start preparing for that early, I'd like to give you some study tips right now. First, master the post-lab questions that are due at the end of each week. Be sure you fully understand them. Those are critical pieces of information to have. Also, there are lab manual chapter questions at the end of each chapter in your reading resource. Although these do not have to be turned in, they are excellent examples of the type of question that you might see on the lab exam. I'd also encourage you to go back occasionally and review the fundamentals lectures to be sure that you fully understand their content, as that material is essentially the theoretical material. And my final tip is this, do not waste time trying to memorize all the minute details of every experiment that we did, the size flasks that we used, the solvent that we employed, etc. In cases where exam questions require that we invoke this information, I'll remind you of that much in the actual question. 
it's more important that you understand the underlying fundamental principles that make the technique work. Because so much of this course is handled electronically, naturally we can all anticipate that we're going to have some technical problems occasionally due to internet outages, computer crashes, etc. I expect this to happen, but when it does happen, I also expect that you will contact me at my university email, rbd34 at georgetown.edu, prior to the submission deadline for the assignment. If I receive an email prior to the submission deadline, indicating that you're having technical difficulties, I will consider late forgiveness. In that email, be sure you include your section number and your TA's name in the subject line and briefly describe the problem that you're having. If I later determine that it is warranted, you may then receive late penalty forgiveness. Otherwise, technical difficulties will not be considered a reason for late penalty forgiveness. So here is a quick rundown of the next few weeks to be sure everyone gets off on the right foot. On August 31st, you'll attend your first recitation because the university follows a Monday schedule on that Wednesday. You don't need to do anything beyond watching this lecture to prepare for this particular recitation. Your TA will introduce themselves and outline some of their expectations for you, as well as answer questions about course policy. Then, remember that that Thursday and Friday labs don't meet. On September 2nd, the first Fundamentals Lecture will post. This Fundamentals Lecture covers lab glass and related items from your lab kit. It's designed to help you get accustomed to identifying some of the items from your kit that you'll be taking charge of during the check-in week. On the week of September 5th, remember that Monday is a Labor Day, so there will be no lab recitation. In fact, you've already had that recitation the previous week. But on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, you will report to lab during your assigned time for a fundamentals quiz on glassware, checking into your drawer, and a safety talk given by me to be sure we all understand our safety rules and are prepared to work in lab the following week. This particular week, AM sections can report at 9.30 AM because the check-in process does not take the entire 3 hours and 50 minutes. On that Friday, a second fundamentals lecture and procedure will post this time covering melting points and recrystallization. You can access those through Blackboard. Then on the week of September 12th, on Monday you'll have your first regular recitation covering melting points and recrystallization. This will involve a fundamentals quiz and a discussion of the procedure with your TA. By that Tuesday, September 13th, I expect all students to have passed the safety quiz. And then that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, depending upon your scheduled time, you'll report to the lab to conduct experiment one. This will get us through the first few weeks of the course, and at this point, things should start moving along nicely. I can't wait to see everyone in the lab. This is Professor Davis signing off for the time being. We'll see you all in the lab for our check-in on the week of September 5th, and your TAs will see you in recitation on August 31st.